Hi, I'm Stephen M. Miller. I write books about the Bible. Some folks say the Bible story about Jesus getting crucified is fiction. They say it couldn't have happened the way the Bible writers reported it. Four different reports of this story show up in the Bible, and they all say that the Roman governor Pontius Pilate allowed friends of Jesus to take his body off the cross shortly after he died. Joseph, a member of the top Jewish council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. They wanted to get the body into the tomb before sundown, which was the beginning of one of the most important Sabbath worship days of the year. It was Passover, an annual day for remembering how God freed the Jews from slavery in Egypt. Here's the problem. People who know their ancient history argue that Romans would never have released the body of Jesus. Leaving the criminal's body hanging on the cross to rot unburied was part of the humiliation. It was part of the punishment. Here's what one critic wrote to me after watching an earlier video I did about crucifixion. I'll post the link to that video. The Romans were absolutely in charge. As such, they would not have cared one whit about removing his body from the cross before sundown in respect for the Jewish Sabbath. They left bodies up there to rot to remind the citizenry not to mess with Roman order. I looked into the history of that to see what writers who lived in Roman times had to say about what Romans did with the bodies of crucified victims. I came away with two surprises. First, I couldn't find any evidence that there was a standard procedure for Romans to leave the body hanging on the cross to rot. Second, I discovered that even if it was standard procedure, there was one excellent reason for the Roman governor Pilate to make an exception for Jesus. When people argue that it was common practice for Romans to leave the dead body on the cross, they're making an assumption, and they're basing their assumption on random sentences pulled out of poems and letters, usually. These excerpts do suggest bodies were often left there to rot, at least during some crucifixions throughout the centuries, but that doesn't mean it was standard procedure for the Romans. In fact, one Roman soldier got three Jewish men off the cross even before they died. He went weeping to his commander, Titus, and explained that the people were acquaintances of his. The soldier, who later became a first century history writer, reported what happened next. Two of them died under the physician's care, while the third recovered. We know that some crucified people were buried because archaeologists have found their bones in tombs. There were 17 found in a tomb at a port near Athens. The reason we don't know if Romans had a standard procedure for dealing with crucified corpses is because Romans didn't write about their crucifixion policy if they had one. Historians say it's probably because they didn't want to write about this horrible torture that they practiced, any more than governments today would want to talk about torture they practice. Waterboarding, for example. Still, it was apparently common to leave crucified bodies hanging. Though Roman officials seemed reluctant to write it into their documents, poets and letter writers do leave us with the impression that crucified people were often left to rot. Cicero was a Roman politician who did a lot of writing about 50 years before Jesus was born, and he told the story of a Greek man with some royal blood in his veins who threatened to crucify an atheist philosopher named Theodorus. As Cicero tells the story, Theodorus wrote a reply to the man who threatened him. Oh, please. Save your abominable taunts for those purple-robed members of the royal court. It makes no difference to Theodorus whether he rots on the ground or in the air. Clearly, there's some rotting going on. Another Roman named Horace wrote that a slave innocent of murder didn't have to fear hanging on the cross to feed the crows. That presumes some bodies hang around long enough that they don't scare crows anymore. Short excerpts like these suggest that executioners sometimes left the crucified corpses hanging. But many Christian scholars say it's probably not fair to presume this was standard procedure for the Romans. Even if it was the custom, Roman Governor Pontius Pilate seems to have had one exceptional reason for granting the request to take Jesus off the cross. Pilate's job was to keep the peace. If he didn't, he could lose his job. If Jesus died in about AD 33, as many scholars speculate, Pilate was already on shaky ground with Caesar in Rome. 
The reason is because the man who had recommended Pilate for the job of ruling the Jewish homeland had gotten himself executed after allegedly attempting a coup two years earlier in AD 31. So it probably would not have taken much to convince Caesar to fire Pilate. In fact, that's exactly what happened a few years later. Pilate ordered soldiers to attack a crowd of locals in what is now the West Bank. The locals complained to Pilate's boss and Pilate got ordered back to Rome to answer the charges. He was never heard from again. With all of this in mind, many Christians argue that it makes perfect sense to trust the story written by the Bible writers who lived in Jesus' time. Many Christians say there's no reason to doubt that Pilate would have granted the request for the body of Jesus since it came from one of the Jewish leaders on the top Jewish council, the council Pilate was trying to keep happy. For more about Roman crucifixion and Jesus, you can check out some of my books. I'll post the links below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. My mother counts those. Oh, yes. If you'd like to see new videos about the Bible as I release them, click the subscribe button. If you'd like to read more about the Bible, subscribe to my free blog articles. Hey, thanks for watching. Peace to you.